So here is your introduction to the world of electron configuration. And what you're going to learn in this set of notes is something that you're actually never going to do again. Kind of like when you were a kid and you were learning how to ride a bike, you learned how to ride with training wheels. But once you learned how to ride a bike, you never use the training wheels again. So think of these notes as your training wheels for electron configuration. So first of all, Bohr diagrams. We don't really use these much in the upper levels of chemistry because beyond about the third row of the periodic table, the Bohr diagrams don't really help us visualize anything. But they are good for the first 20 or so elements, and so we'll go ahead and use them on these lower level guys. So the first thing that you do is you're going to draw the nucleus, then you're going to add in the correct number of energy levels or electron levels, and if you're going, well, how do I know how many rings to draw? Well, the number of energy levels is going to be equal to whatever row that particular element is on. And then from there, you can fill in the correct number of electrons. And if you have a hard time remembering how many electrons go in each energy level, we'll count the number of elements in that particular row. So if you look at row 1 on the periodic table, there are two elements in row 1, which means there are two electrons that go in the first energy level. So, of course, anytime I teach how to do something, we've got to do some practice. So, the first element that I want us to draw a Bohr model for is oxygen. And the first thing that you're going to draw is the nucleus for oxygen. And according to the periodic table, oxygen will have eight protons. And we'll use the most common form of oxygen, which is oxygen 16. So, it's going to have those eight protons, and it's also going to have eight neutrons. So now the next step is to draw the correct number of energy levels. Well, oxygen is in row two. So we're going to draw two expertly drawn, if I do say myself, energy levels. Now we need to fill these energy levels in with the correct number of electrons. And the number of electrons that a neutral atom of oxygen has is going to match the number of protons. So we're going to draw eight total electrons. Well, the first energy level corresponds to the first row of the periodic table. And in the first row, we have two elements. So in the first energy level, we're going to have two electrons. And then for the second energy level, there are eight elements in the second row, and so we can have up to eight electrons, but we only need eight total, and we've already got two drawn, so we're only going to draw six more. And the way that you draw them is you go in quadrants, one, two, three, four, and now you're going to double back up four, five, and six. And so this is going to be the Bohr model for oxygen. Our next practice is going to be calcium, and on this one, I want you to pause the video, try to draw it out on your own, and then play the video and watch and check your work. So the first thing that you're going to draw is the nucleus, and calcium has 20 protons, and the most common form of calcium is calcium 40, so it's going to have 20 protons and 20 neutrons. And then calcium is in row 4, so we are going to have 4 energy levels this time. Another good thing about Bohr models is that they can help you envision how the atomic radius of an element increases as you go down a group because the more of these little energy levels you draw, the bigger this model tends to get, which signifies an increase in the size of the actual atom that the model represents. So again, we do have a neutral atom of calcium. and if it has 20 protons, then it's going to have 20 electrons. So we need to start filling those guys in. Well, here in the first energy level, we are allowed to have two electrons. And again, if you forgot that, in row one of the periodic table, we only have two elements. So remember, the number of elements in a particular row will help you remember how many electrons are fit in that particular energy level. So, and I'm going to keep kind of a running tally of my electrons. I know I need to have 20 total. Well, I just drew two, so that means I now need 18. So in my second energy level, which corresponds to the second row of the periodic table, there are eight elements in that row, so there are going to be eight electrons. And remember, you fill them in, just kind of going around, and it's not until the fifth electron that we double up. And be really careful when you're filling in these dots that you 
follow the correct line because sometimes it's easy to get off. So we just took care of another eight and we are down to 10. And on the third energy level, we still have eight elements in the third row. So I'm again going to draw eight electrons. And this is where the Bohr model starts to kind of fall apart because in the third energy level, you can actually have more than eight electrons, but you don't add the past eight until you've started filling in the fourth, but for our purposes, this suffices. So we've just taken care of another eight, which leaves us with two, which are gonna go in this outer energy level, and they will be there. So there. the whole purpose of this is to get you thinking in terms of that electrons can fall into energy levels and as you move down the periodic table in a group you add more energy levels to that atom. Well if you think of an atom like an office building, that's a great office building let me tell you, it's beautiful, and the office building has floors. Well, let's stick with calcium here and say we have four very uneven floors. And in any building, those floors, you don't just have open floors. The floors are further divided into rooms. We'll pretend like these are the windows to those rooms. And if we were applying this analogy to an atom, these floors in the office building would correspond to the energy levels and these rooms would correspond to these things called sublevels. So we can divide an electron level, an energy level, into specific regions called sublevels. And each sublevel has a maximum number of electrons that it can hold. So it, the first sublevel that you're going to encounter is S. And it can only hold two electrons. It's a very, very small sublevel. And the second sublevel is P, and it can hold a maximum of six electrons. It's a slightly bigger sublevel. Then you have D, and D can hold 10 electrons, up to. It can hold less than that, but the most it can hold is 10. And then F is the biggest sublevel that we currently have, and it can hold a maximum of 14 electrons. Now, not every energy level has all four of these sublevels. Some of the energy levels are smaller than others. And if you remember energy level one, we only had two electrons in that energy level. And so energy level one only has an S sublevel. So it'd be like the first floor of a building only having one very small room. And then the second energy level was capable of holding up to eight electrons. If you remember, there are eight elements in the second row. And so it has both an S and a P, because two plus six adds up to the eight that the second energy level can hold. Now the third energy level, on the periodic table, it looks like the third row only has eight uh, elements in it, which means it can only hold eight electrons. But this is where the periodic table, you start having to make some accommodations. And the third energy level can actually hold 18 electrons because it has the S and the P rooms or sublevels, but it also has this D sublevel that's kind of hidden, and I'll explain to you in a second where it is. And then for the fourth energy level, the fourth energy level will have an S, a P, a D, and an F for a grand total of 32 electrons in that energy level. And then the fifth energy level will have five sublevels, the sixth energy level will have six sublevels, and I think you guys can get the pattern there. So what's the point? Well, on the periodic table, I told you guys that the first row, the first row only has two elements in it. That corresponds to the two electrons that are in group one. I'm sorry, energy level one. Then the second energy level can hold up to eight electrons, which corresponds to these eight elements right here. And you're probably looking at the third row and going, okay, well it's got eight elements in it, so it should be able to hold eight as well. But this weird thing happens. These two rows of elements, these two groups of elements correspond to what's called the S block, because each of these elements 
has its valence electrons being filled in the S sublevel. Well, in the P sublevel can hold six electrons, and here we have six columns of elements, and so this corresponds to the P block. This helium guy right here, he fits into this open spot here. It's the one and only time that helium does not fit into the noble gas category. It still does by property, so he's over here for good, but just in this one situation. Now, the D block I said existed in the third energy level. Well, the D block can hold 10 electrons, and if you notice, right here in the center, we have a group of electrons that's made up of 10 columns, and so this is the D block. And the F block is our last little set down there on the bottom. And the D block and the F block, they have so much energy, you can kind of think of them as being like overweight with energy, that they fell down an energy level. If, if this confuses you, then just ignore what I'm about to say. But this first row right here in the D block actually corresponds to energy level three. It was so heavy with energy that it fell down. Instead of being on row three, it fell down to row four. So you can think of the D block energy levels as row minus one. And the F block, remember this little section right here, it fits in right there in row six and seven. So this is actually row six, and this down here is actually row seven. Well, the F block was so heavy with energy that it fell down two rows, and so, this row right here that's in row six of the periodic table actually corresponds to 4F, the F row in the fourth energy level. So F block is row minus two. Don't worry about completely understanding all of that now. Once we go full on electron configuration, you'll understand what this means. Okay, so let's do a little bit of practice. How many of each sublevel are filled? Now this is the training wheel part. Once you learn how to do real electron configuration, you'll never do what we're about to do again. But this will just help you get the general idea of what it is that you're doing. So chlorine is over here in group 17, and it's on the third row. So if we were filling in the electrons of chlorine, what sublevels would we get to? Well, we would go through one, two, three, S sublevels. And we would go through one whole P and then a partial P. And so I'm just going to call, anytime we have a partial filled sublevel, I'm just going to call it a half. I know that that's not exactly half, but it's close enough for our purposes. So one half just means partially filled. And we didn't go through any of the D block, and we did not go through any of the F blocks, so I just left those guys zero. Well, what about iodine? Well, iodine is over here, way down here, again in group 17, but now we're on row five. Well, how many S's did we go through? We went through five different S's to get to iodine. And when I say we went through, you read the periodic table when you're doing electron configuration like you read a book. Left to right, and then top to bottom. Just like you're reading a book. So in reading our little table and getting to iodine, we would have read through five S's. We would have read through one, two, three, and a partial P. So remember we'll call that three and a half P. You can see right here, we would have read through this D, and we would have read through a second D. So we went through two Ds, but we didn't hit any Fs at all, so no Fs. One last example, let's look at calcium. So calcium is right here in the fourth energy level, second group. So to get to calcium, we would have gone through four whole S's. Now you're probably going, wait a minute, well, we stopped here. Yeah, we did stop here, but this is the end of the S, so we actually got all the way through the fourth energy level of S. Now for P, we would have read through this one and this one, but we actually wouldn't have gotten to this one yet, so we only would have gone through two P's, 
We didn't make it to any of the D's. We got really close to getting to a D, but we didn't quite get there, and we didn't get through any of the F's.